Hey there, this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am your host, Nina Perez, and we are here to discuss life topics to challenge and transform your thinking. Let's do this. Today, I have someone here so pleasant. I just really adore her. Her name is Raquel Alger, and she is a motivational speaker, a certified life coach, a certified therapeutic art life coach, which I love. And the most important relationship she has is with God. And I love that too, because that's my relationship with God too. So I wanted her here so we can talk about really a lot of different things, because there's a lot of coaches out there, right, Raquel? And, um, but I like the therapeutic art part of it that you have in there. I love that you boldly say, I, you know, my relationship with God is important Mm -hmm. that you do this motivational speaking. So before we get into all of that, I, um, can you please let my audience know a little bit more about you and who Raquel is? Of course. So right now I am currently going to school for my master's in social work. Right now it's, uh, kind of like the break season because it's Mm -hmm. during the summer. Uh, And I have my bachelor's in psychology and also certified life coach. And she just went over everything. But I really just have so much fun with Mm -hmm. what knowledge I've gained, whether it be therapeutic uh, art coach. And I really enjoy doing that the most. And I think it's just such a great opportunity to help transform your thinking Mm. and find a place of peacefulness and kind of ground you because that's what I use it for for myself. Oh, that's great. That's great. Is it something that you've always done your whole life or was there something that was a pivoting moment for you, something that changed you and made you go to the direction of having life coaching and something that was more therapeutic for you? You know, what's interesting is that I didn't do it as much or even look at it as um, something I could advance myself in. So Mm -hmm. I do it every so often and I did it for myself. And actually I um, teach part-time at an alternative high school. And I found out that even though it's at high school, right, we can all benefit from therapeutic art coaching. Mm -hmm. So I would incorporate um, a lot of drawing exercises. And you know, it's very interesting. A lot of people were very focused when I incorporated art into the lesson Mm because they would, you know, be using pencils like and markers to draw their, I guess, expressions or feelings even towards the topic I mean I taught philosophy and astronomy so but I made it work and (laughs) I I really do and you get to see the creativity of everyone and that they also like to show it out you know they want to say this is great I can present this because I give them the opportunity to do this and you see their confidence boost and I think that's also so great about it because when you complete a project if you're using that sort of uh, part of therapy with art, you feel like you completed like this goal. You get to look at it and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could do that. Right. Yeah. It's re- it's really nice. I used to do um, also just, okay, I'll say my favorite one that I did. It was, I'm really sorry for everyone who's against like balloons and um you know believes that it's very bad for nature and believe me I don't have like a bunch of balloons go up in there but it was this this practice that I used and it was you have a sticker you have two stickers attached to uh the balloon you have a negative thought you want to go away you get away and you also share a positive one that you want to share to the world And I thought that was so great. It was relieving. And also it showed that you have uh, positive, you know, positive uh, things that you can give back to the universe as well Mm -hmm. and other people. Mm -hmm. 
I really like that. Would that's you put, would you put those stickers on the balloon? You mean and release them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. yeah. That's so therapeutic too, right? Because uh, I've done something similar, but we did it with paper, like this burned paper that you write like a negative thought or something you want to let go Mm -hmm. of. And then, then you just light the paper and the paper just, and just goes (laughs) like, you know, lights up and goes away, but it's very therapeutic. You know, it just, it it helps you release. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're dealing with, um, you know, the younger generation, like you are in the schools and stuff like that, you know, they have a lot of stuff going on. And mm-hmm. so it's nice that you can do that for them. That that's that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Agree. I could see why you would enjoy that because you're seeing almost like an instant transformation, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when they release them in the balloons, like you see that instant, like I let that go. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. And you seem like you're really into you know people and and uh, helping people because even your master's is in psychology, uh, psychology or no uh, social, social work, work. Yeah. social work, right? Which is people <laughs> yeah it's people, people. Definitely. <laughs> that's awesome so were you always this um you know into like helping people and stuff or was there a transition in your life of something you've gone through that helps you understand people at a, at a different level yeah so basically one of the things that wanted me to get really involved in psychology or just social work or connections like people person um was I went through bullying I mean this is going to back to middle school and high school Mm -hmm. but I remember how that impacted me and how some of the things that I know now I wish I knew back then Mm. Uh, but, but then I actually was diagnosed with depression and OCD Uh, and depression in middle school and then high school OCD. So it was, it was a rough time. And I realized that therapy helped me so much because there's also a stigma around therapy where people can be like, oh, there's something wrong with you. Um, What type of disease do you have? (laughs) Like, you know, right. So we all it, need therapy. <laughs> yes, we, we do. We really do. Yeah. It's, it's so beneficial. Yeah, it in, in class, we talk about how, um, you know what? Just go to therapy. It's, it should be a requirement for us because we're, yeah. we're learning about all this, uh, you know, heavy stuff about mm-hmm. abuse. And also, like, some stuff can be a little, like, you know, personal because of OCD and stuff. And depression and I'm working through it still Mm -hmm. um and spiritual my spirituality and also uh art has helped me now more than ever and I really just really appreciate that I've been more comfortable with going to therapy than I was in the past yeah Therapy is so important though. I've been to therapy too. You know, what you know, we in our lives we go through so many different challenges and things, right? And a lot of times we feel alone and that nobody understands us and what we're going through. Mm-hmm. Or we have, you know, people like, you know, what you were talking about, the bullying and stuff, or people who are just not nice and kind or have hurt us. Mm-hmm. Therapy helps you, right? It helps you release all of that. Um, And it's good. I'm glad that you are working also with a younger generation because they need that voice, right? To somebody say Mm -hmm. to them, you know, therapy is actually a good thing. This is nothing wrong with it. There's no stigma about that. Mm -hmm. Not to me anyway. I think that I've always said this. I think everybody needs a coach in their life. Mm -hmm. And going to therapy is a good thing. You know what I mean? But everybody needs a coach because you need somebody who's going to motivate you, who's going to be there with you, make you accountable, you know, show mm-hmm. you where you might be having some short sightedness and, and help you get through that. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's good that you're doing life coaching, too. So that that's going to really play a good part in your master's, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you find it to be like connecting? Yes, I have. So when also it adds to the importance of um, connections, mm-hmm. because we do talk about you know, the DSM-5 and you know, things of that nature, right? And theories. I love learning about that. But also, and I have a year left, so we're going to get into different things, but <laughs> through the life coaching courses and the certifications, 
and the spiritual certification that I had to do. Um, it helped me think about connections with people right. and how important that is. So right. I kind of I kind of like that stepping away from the theories just for a little bit. Yeah. And then there's there's always more things you can learn. Always. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I always said I, I, I never want to stop learning. My son just said that yeah. to me the other day. He goes, Mom, you're going to be like 80, 85. You're still going to be finding new things to do. And, to, and that's just my yeah. personality because I never want to stop learning. I want my brain to always be active, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I wanted to get to um, what you do with uh, with with kids. And it must make you really sensitive to to like be able to see what you think might be going on in someone's life, especially mm -hmm. a young person, right? Being that you have the history of, of having to overcome your, you know, struggles and battles of the, you know, the bullying and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Bullying is a big deal. It's a big yeah. freaking deal, right? Yeah. Um, and we shouldn't wait to talk about it when a mm -hmm. kid takes his own life or, you know, something horrible happens. I think it should be something that people talk about more often because it's real. It's real, yes. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so, so real. And I like that. I love that you brought up the point that we shouldn't like wait for mm -hmm. something bad to happen in order to talk about it. This is something that, you know, parents should also, I believe, you know, at least say, you know, I'm here for you to talk and mm -hmm. talking is just such a great tool. You know, hearing when I was going through depression and I was talk, talking helped me so much. Yeah. Just someone, someone saying, I'm here to listen to you. At first I was a little hesitant. To be honest, I didn't talk about my depression and OCD a lot with, you know, the outside world, outside of therapy, right. even in the beginning of therapy, I didn't really talk that much but I became more comfortable with myself and that, you know, uh, the world's not out to get me, even though mm -hmm, I really feel like mm -hmm. it did. And I mean, you're going to face those people and those hateful words, you know, five days a week, you know, like five mm -hmm. days a week, you're going to see them in classes. And also for any young people or parents that are having, you know, are dealing with bullying issues, this is something that really helped me that teachers can work with you. So I spoke with, after I talked to my dad, I went and we went together to, to, to talk with a school counselor and brought it to the school's attention. And each teacher worked with me, That's whether it good. be changing the, the seating arrangements. Oh my gosh, what a difference. What a difference that wow, made. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So that was so helpful. And yeah, I, I really, you know, it's, it was just something that hit me so hard. And there, there, there have been people that kids, kids, like that teenagers that have taken their own lives because of oh, yeah. bullying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I know a few, right? So I, that's why I said that we don't have to wait until something bad happens before we do something about it. And I, uh, this conversation um, is important, too, because like you said, I, I spoke to my dad and so then something got done. And mm -hmm. I think that that's, you know, so beneficial you know, you saying that you need to speak, you need to use your voice. Mm -hmm. And I think that for anybody who's listening, whether you're older or not, because I, st I struggled with depression too. So, you know, I, I know what that feels like. And it's a very mm -hmm. dark place, Yeah, but exactly. there is light, there will be light and, you know, get the help because there's a lot of people out there who want to help Raquel, right? I mean, there's a yeah. lot of people who really do want to help. Not mm -hmm. everybody is a bully, I guess is what I'm trying to say, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. these these small manushkas of people who are bullies who I don't care for, mm -hmm. you know, like <laughs> I just don't. If you're going to be a bully, I don't, I don't really jive too well with that. Um, but what I do know is that there's a lot of people who are kind mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people who have gone through stuff and are willing and able to help. So I'm just encouraging people to speak. And I know that you're in a good place, Raquel, because you're speaking about it. And I, mm -hmm. you know, we, when you start to speak about it, it gives them less power. Yeah. Right. 
it gives you more of the power and it gives that thing or the people less power because once you start to face it and talk about it and and just like call it for what it is Mm -hmm. it just loses its you know it's it's glow it's you know it just doesn't it just doesn't have the same effect you know Mm -hmm. yeah so I think hiding it is the worst thing you can do do you agree yeah I I do it it took me a while to open up yeah but uh yeah yeah Yeah. talking about it or or different forms of how you can communicate with people Mm -hmm. like you know like or whatever just talking and speaking about it and you know coming to the realization that there are also kind people out there yeah was so helpful it it made me feel like I wasn't alone and that you know just the kindness of people around me gave me strength Mm -hmm. and I Mm -hmm. was able to have courage to go to school every day and you know, see those people and use like tools that I've learned and, you know, what not to say, listen, this was my mindset also. Like, I don't care what these people think because I have friends that love me for who I am. Good for you. And even though it took me a while to make friends too, because I was new to the school and everything, but I, I said, I have people in my life that love me and that helped me as well. Yeah, uh, that's so but, helpful. Mm-hmm. And, and there's adult yeah. bullies too. That's what I was just, I was just going to touch on that. Go ahead, Raquel. Yeah. You got this. <laughs> adult bullies yes, too. Are. And, yeah. You know, it, it amazes me. It, it really does. I, I, I can't, I can't believe it. You right. know? And <laughs> it really hurts my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're, you're absolutely, I was going to say that I said, you know, we're talking about kids, but there's adult bullies too. And, you know, I, it, and it's funny because um, I'm a little bit tougher skinned, right? I mean, I, I've been through a hard life, so I'm a little bit tougher skinned and, but I've never been a bully. I don't mm-hmm. believe in bullying. I've never been a bully. That's just not my thing. In mm-hmm. fact, I was the type of person who gravitated towards the kid who was getting bullied. You know, like, so if that kid was getting bullied, that's the kid I wanted to friend, be friends with because I didn't like it. You know, mm-hmm. you know, what changed my mind was in high school. I'll never forget. There was this young lady who was, um, I didn't know her. I didn't know her, but I did see her getting bullied a lot. Um, and she was different than every other kid. You know, she had spiky hair and the black around the eyes and all this other stuff. And no other kid looked like her. Right. Mm-hmm. So people used to bully her. And so, and I just got so fed up with it, you know, and I just remember just going up to her and I sat next to her and I was like, Hey, what's up? She's like, look at me like, what do you want? You know, but I tell you what, I had a conversation with her. I enjoyed her conversation. She was so nice. And we, ha- we had a great conversation, two totally different people from two totally different sides of the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every time we saw each other, we would say hi, whatever. We didn't become best friends, but we did talk. Do you know mm-hmm. that at the end of the year, we were graduating and she came up to me and said, I just wanted to say thank you because I don't know if you know what you did for me that day. And I'm like, what day? And she goes, you know, the day you sat and talked to me, I said, Oh, yeah, well, you were, you know, we we're just chilling, you know, and she's like, well, you saved my life, because I was actually going to commit suicide that day. And because you spoke to me, I realized that I didn't have to do wow. that. And I'm like, wow, Raquel, that oh changed gosh. everything for me, that changed everything for me, because I wow. realized Everybody needs to be noticed. I'm the person that walks in a room and notices the person in the corner, notices Mm -hmm. the person that's picking up the garbage. And like, if we're in in this big conference and they're Mm -hmm. picking up the garbage, I go up to the person picking up the garbage. Hey, what's going on? How are you today? You know, and they're like, oh, uh, good. You know, know, like, why is she talking to me? But that's just who I am. I literally will go to New York City and I'll sit on the floor with, with the homeless person. Hey, what's going on? You know, yeah, you do. Also, we would get along great. Yeah, (laughs) I do that all the time. My husband's like, "Here we go." (laughs) And people think I'm weird. And me too. I I get to be weird. (laughs) Yeah, it it is good to be weird because I'd rather um not fit in with the people that are the bullies and the, you know, the mean, (laughs) the mean people. But I mean, yeah, like you know, a similar situation happened to me at when I when I was in high school. First of all, thank you so much for doing that. You saved a life. I mean, I that just shows that Wow. any kindness that you do, yep. you never know 
never know how it's going to impact someone's life. Right. You used to get trouble. So it's like, so when I was in high school, there's this girl on my bus and she kept on getting bullied. At this point, it was towards like 11th, 12th grade. So I became more tough skinned, you know, towards, mm-hmm. I was, I was kind of like used to, I learned my coping skills. Like if people are mean to me and I'm not saying it didn't completely affect me or, but I learned how to deal with that. And I saw her getting bullied all the time, like That's slammed. So frustrating. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, and then I became friends with her. I invited her to, um, to like games, like, cause I've, I live on Long Island. So there's hockey games here. We did uh, just other fun stuff together. And I did not care if I was, you know, put in this bubble of who not to talk to. But I was just like, I have a friend. She's actually really nice. I'm glad I talked to her. Like, you know, we weren't best friends, but still. Right. Well, you don't have to be their best friend, right? You just have to yeah. show kindness. That's all it takes. It literally takes two words. Hi, or how are you? Or it, it, it takes no effort. It takes no effort to be kind, you know? Yes. <laughs> it takes no effort. Yeah. And that's why I think that, you know, what you're doing with being a life coach and a therapeutic art life coach, I think that's amazing, right? Because you're reaching them at different levels now. So you're not just talking to them, right? Because mm-hmm. you can do that with your life coaching. I'm, I'm you know, that's what you do as a life coach. Mm-hmm. But to also be touching them in art is very, you know, very inspirational because a lot mm-hmm. of people don't know how to talk. They don't know what to, how to tell you what they're feeling. Some mm-hmm. people might do it through poetry or writing. Mm -hmm. you know, or drawing or whatever Mm -hmm. it is. So that's great that you're reaching them at that level as well. What do you Mm -hmm. want to do with that kind of work? You know what? I, I, um, just think of it also as what I can incorporate, incorporate it to other jobs in the future Mm -hmm. and, um, my practice or where I work. Like I was just, you know, telling you about how, uh, someone saw that on the resume they loved it. And they said, honestly, I didn't think people were going to look at that right away and be like, wow. But she, she said, come in. I want to talk to you. I want to interview you. And she's like, I love that you do this. I think the kids here are going to love it. Mm, she's like, okay. you know, they always need a certain way, you know, different ways to like express themselves. Uh, and I was like, worse and so uh yeah I'll be doing that soon it's volunteer work I do not mind yeah that's so good that's so good and listen it you know volunteer work is also important right I mean Mm -hmm. that's you know you start to to see how you can navigate what you're doing grow in in the in the practice of it you know Mm -hmm. and impact lives at the same time hello yeah all good win 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 all good good. (laughs) right Now, do you do speaking as well? Um, do you do you go out and, and speak at different schools or do different events or anything like that? I wish I could, but I got used to speaking because I'm a teacher. And oh, that's right. Yeah. When I started um, doing podcasts like this, at first I was very nervous because I didn't. It was I didn't really know what to do or if right. how to answer specific questions because I didn't know how people wanted to go a certain way and um because I just keep on talking and talking but I really did um appreciate these any opportunity I have to share my voice and whatnot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. listening is very important too like as as um a life coach like that's important to, li- <laughs> to mm-hmm. listen but when I do have a uh, opportunity to talk I love, I love it. I love sharing my story because like you said, you never know who it's going to impact. You don't, you really Mm -hmm. don't, you really Mm -hmm. don't, you know? And like, um, like I was saying about the young lady in high school, it's the same thing. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't Mm -hmm. know that, but I Mm -hmm. knew that I had was moved by kindness and I was moved by the fact that she was a life. And if it was only that one life, then that's fine. But we have to get out of our own way sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. And so just reaching out to the one, I always say this, um, that I believe in the audience of one, because mm-hmm. I believe that even if we can use our story to impact one life, we've done our job. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's mm-hmm. more than one, awesome. 
you know, but if you impact the one life, look what, what you can do. Oh my right. Gosh. You know, yeah. I've said that before too. And I actually was praying to God when I was going through a very rough time. And I said, God, if everything I've been through in my life, you know, I've, you know, I'm not saying I had the worst life ever, but I'm saying it was, it was pretty bad. And I had a bunch of sur surgeries. I don't know how I'm alive. Like, so I, I, I was like, God, please, please, it will all be worth it if it impacts someone. Mm -hmm. And so I got baptized. I share, I was allowed to share my testimony in front of everyone. And there was this man who came up to me afterwards and said, thank you. I was like, for what? And he said, what you talked about, how, I don't know who's, who's very spiritual listening to this or whatnot. And he said he was on the fence of believing in God. And now showing his faith and he told me that wow. he believes in god you know i was like that's god doing that work but, <laughs> that's awesome. but you are welcome <laughs> yeah that's awesome though right because um you know that one person believing in god or getting off the fence right mm -hmm. can help him now go impact one more life who Just, impacts one more life who impacts one more life yeah yeah, yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so awesome yeah I was, I was literally just about to say that. Oh my gosh, you're, so, you're so right. You never know what that person is going to do now. It's like a yeah. chain, chain of, you know, yeah. chain reaction. And uh, yeah. So, yeah. And it, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. It really is when you can impact, you know, people's lives. It's like what you shared your story about, you know, um, the teachers actually putting into action, moving you around and helping you. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the, maybe that'll inspire someone to think, oh, maybe I should be saying something and maybe they can move me around or they can help me with this. Mm -hmm. And that could just be the one thing that you said in this whole interview that can change somebody's life. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. But like those little snippets of things that we do in life and how we use our lives, our testimonies and what we go through can impact everybody in so many different facets of life, right? Mm -hmm. So whether they've gone through bullying, whether they only speak through art, whether they, you know, didn't know how to speak before and now do whether mm -hmm. they never even knew there was such a thing as a therapeutic art life coach you know yeah. what I'm saying and now they do you know what I mean yeah. like everything we do has a ripple effect right and I don't mm -hmm. I I am one of those people who believe that God created us all so uniquely different and created mm -hmm. us in a way mm -hmm. so that we can touch other people's lives because we, we might be completely different me and you but we have some things that connect mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I think that's just out through humanity right? Mm -hmm. We're all so completely different, but yet not so different mm -hmm. that we can't connect on some level. Yeah. Right. I yeah. That's that. a beautiful thing. I love yeah. That. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, um, no, I really do love that because there's so many components to us. And I was, mm -hmm. uh, teaching one time and a student said, um, you know, Raquel, like, I feel kind of like an outcast. I have seizures sometimes. And I said, oh my gosh, I do too. And I actually had a seizure like two weeks later, but at the job, but uh, I said, I do too. And he goes, really? And I said, the way I cope with it is that I pretend it's like a superpower. Not everyone's different. Everyone has uh, like, you know, it can have epilepsy, can have epilepsy polar disorder, whatever, right? I said, I use it as a super power. And I say, oh my gosh, I'm so unique, you know? <laughs> and mm -hmm. this way I can talk to other people like you who are feeling this. And there's nothing wrong if you don't, you know, decide to disclose information because it could be very personal. It took me a while to be okay and open about that and not to be as so embarrassed. Uh, thankfully, my seizures have been like good. I haven't had one in a really long time, but good. Um, it's it's so nice when someone you're able to have that connection, and you're just yeah able to be like, you know, I feel like a superpower. This is how I deal with it, and the relief you could just you know see the relief in the other person, like, oh, really? Someone else has this too, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that was your superpower. Yeah, that was, it really was right. Mm -hmm. Because you were able to connect at a level 
with this student Mm -hmm. that obviously he didn't have a connection with, with someone else. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was Mm -hmm. a superpower. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. That's great. And I'm glad that you're a teacher. You have a great spirit about you. Very, very wow. nice. So I'm really Thank glad you. that you are um, you're teaching and that you're doing this life coaching. I think you're going to be phenomenal when you get your master's and and keep on moving and going. So I loved your spirit and I loved you know your your Instagram and I loved everything you had on there. I'm like, oh wow, she has such a beautiful uh, energy and spirit about her. So I'm glad that you took the time to be here with me today. This was a very special, special conversation. Of so course. thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. I really am. So Raquel. If people want to uh, know, you know, like follow you on Instagram or anything like that, or know what you're doing as far as your life coaching and all that, can you give us like um, how we can follow you and Mm -hmm. find out? What you can do is definitely just follow me, message me. If you need to talk, I'm here. Good. (laughs) Is it under uh, Raquel Alger or? Uh, Oh, at Hope Change Inspire. So yeah, that's, it. Uh, that's the handle hope yeah. change inspire. And I am in the process of making a website. Cause... Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Are you building it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did that hours and hours and hours of it. <laughs> Good for you. I love that by the way, hope change inspire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Uh, hope was the one word, honestly, that helped me so much. It mm-hmm. meant so much to me when I was in my deepest, darkest uh, depression was faith and the word hope, that there's always hope. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why I chose that. And it, yeah, is that, is that what, um, what then created change? Is that why that came about? Yes, perfect, mm-hmm. yes. And then mm-hmm. that there, you have the ability to change. And then after that, you can inspire others. That's really great. That's really great, Raquel. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this space with me. I appreciate you. And thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and please do follow her. The handle is Hope change and inspire and as you can tell by this wonderful conversation that's exactly who she is so thank you guys so much for listening and watching this is nina perez this is straight talk no sugar added until next time make sure that you visit our website at straight talk no sugar added where you can subscribe to our show on itunes and stitcher or anywhere you listen to your podcast or on youtube so you'll never miss a show and while you're at it if you found value in this show we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes, or if you simply tell a friend about our show, that would be awesome too. If you like this show, you might want to check out our book as well. It's Hit Me With Your Best Shot, How I Overcame a Hard-Hitting Life. I am Nina Perez, and I am here for you. If you are looking for private coaching, make sure that you email me at hello at straighttalknosugaraddit.com. Until next time.